In the last video, we analyzed the reduction of an aldehyde to an alcohol, and implied that the reverse reaction, the oxidation of an alcohol, was also possible. And it is! But it requires specialized reagents. We usually use chromium-6 compounds for this purpose. The oxidation of an alcohol requires the removal of the hydrogen atom on the hydroxy group and a hydrogen atom on the adjacent carbon. This means that tertiary alcohols, which don't have any hydrogen atoms on the alcohol carbon, can't be oxidized, at least not by these sorts of reagents. Secondary alcohols can be readily oxidized by most chromium-6 compounds, the simplest of which is chromium trioxide in water. The product of this reaction is a ketone. Primary alcohols can also react with CrO3 in water to produce aldehydes. But unfortunately, we can't stop the reaction here. In aqueous solution, the aldehyde is in equilibrium with its hydrate, and CrO3 also oxidizes these compounds, giving a carboxylic acid. Even though the hydrate is usually present in small quantities at equilibrium, this reaction pulls the equilibrium forward by Le Chatelier's principle. So essentially, the oxidation of a primary alcohol by chromium trioxide in water goes all the way up to oxidation levels, giving a carboxylic acid. So is there a way to stop the oxidation of a primary alcohol at the aldehyde? We chemists are clever and lucky. By a stroke of luck, in the mid-1970s, a researcher by the name of J. William Suggs, in the lab of Nobel winner E.J. Corey at Harvard, was working with chromium trioxide in the solvent pyridine and hydrochloric acid, and stumbled, quite fortuitously, on the reagent pyridinium chlorochromate, which is a tame version of CrO3, and cleanly oxidizes primary alcohols to aldehydes, and doesn't go any further. Pyridinium chlorochromate, which is now called PCC, also oxidizes secondary alcohols to ketones. You aren't responsible for knowing the mechanisms of these reactions, though they are presented in the textbook if you're curious, only the outcomes.